<laughs> the current bass? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, the current bass. That's not a nightmare. Ready? Oh, I, I gave the headstock away first. Like a spaceship blasting through, oh, like an 80s ship, dude. Yeah. Dude, look at that. This is, uh, you know, this is not a nightmare. In fact, how about this, Scott? Let's do this for a second. What's an instrument that you received recently that you bought or that, you know, maybe you bought it for a giveaway or you, and, and you had, I'm not even going to project this. Let me just ask you this. What's a bass that surprised you? Um, that was not a nightmare that was, you were like, Oh, hold on. This is way sweeter than I thought. Okay. Two. One of Two? which is in my living room, one of which is right here. So I'll go get it. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> Stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, listen, as Scott is going to get oh, this bass. I might have three, actually. Good. Oh, I, yeah. Good. I've got a few as well. <laughs> so this is number one. You might have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know that bass. I know this that bass. Is the Cubicky Factor, which I like to say, Ian presented me with yes it presented ah. you and i present <laughs> you with this bass. yeah, yeah. killing bass so this surprised me what surprised me about this bass is well various things how amazing the design is and yeah. how philip kubicki just was so dialed in and did some really like innovative things with it yep like whether it be the bridge or the extender key at the top of the headstock or the, the neck construction that's sort of like a super lam like a multi laminate n laminated uh, neck. Yeah. Like all of that. And then the sound of it really um surprised me as well. Yes. The sound of specifically the neck pickup, I was like, oh, oh that yeah. sounds amazing. And like Nick, who is uh, not Nick, sorry, Jim, who is I would consider a neck pickup junkie you know Agreed. he plays a p bass yes. first thing like jim does shout out to jim who like he's done a bunch like to call him i don't know what he does he does a lot of stuff over at sbl and uh we've just done like a whole load of youtube videos and jim was like an integral part of that team yeah, and he was in a producing. producer role yeah yeah he was yeah. in a producer role on those days and oh it was so cool anyway so he's a p bass junkie and he was playing it and he was like, oh, this is amazing. So, yeah, like the Kubicki and the playability as well is off the charts. Yeah, it totally next up, is. Next up is the wall. Oh, yeah. The wall I bought, uh, which thank, yeah. And I was like, which thankfully I like because it cost like <laughs> three times as much as my car. Um, so, yes. that wall base, the Mark One, the one which was used in the video for um, Live Aid, the Live Aid uh, Ethiopian. Um, what was it called? A campaign that was in like 1984 or maybe 1986. Anyway, so that bass, the circuit on that bass really surprised me. It was really, really cool. Love it. Yes. Um, side note, one came up for, on Reverb for sale on Mark III yesterday for, I think, $13,000. Crazy. It is... They are so expensive. It is They're so absurd. I know. It's absurd. It's absurd, <laughs> isn't it? I'm just like... And, and you know... I I was telling you, like, right before we started this, like, now that I, now that we're doing this thing, and we're talking a lot about bases, and we're doing this podcast, people show me things on the internet all the time, right? Yeah. So, like, I'll get these DMs of people that have bases that they maybe want to sell, or they'll point me to, like, reverb listings, and it doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help the addiction, dude. It is brutal. I mean, I love it, so don't stop doing it. But, oh, my <laughs> God, it is – people are like, oh, have you seen this? Case in point, this thing for me, right? That's why you bought it, right? Because somebody yeah. actually DM'd you on Instagram and said, ooh, yeah. check this out. Yeah. Christian in uh, in Mexico, I think maybe maybe Mexico City, and I'm sorry, Shout I don't remember Christian. your last name. Um, but, man, he was like, hey, you know, I noticed you guys talking about Marin, talking about, you know, like uh, – uh, bbs and yeah or, or yeah. maybe maybe i saw it, it actually on this one it could have been that i reached out to him but anyway we had a nice rapport right yeah. on on instagram and he was like oh yeah man sure <laughs> i was like oh no so did you did you buy that from him i did oh wow. i bought it from him yeah and so Amazing. i'm your i'm your base buyer <laughs> 
con- hit me up. <laughs> hit me up in the DMs. If you've got any uh, any bases <laughs> knocking about that you don't want, message Ian on Instagram and he'll be uh, happy to oblige. Yeah. But I didn't mean to jump in. I know you got another one, but I just wanted to say that this, like I didn't, I mean, I played yours just briefly, but I haven't yeah. had m- much experience with a Yamaha BB. If you're not watching the pod, I've got an 80s Yamaha BB 3000A, which is the cool neck through made in Japan. This one is white. Scott has a black one. This one has an active circuit, which has a really interesting EQ. The yeah. the treble control is almost more like a mid range control. Uh, it's really it's really interesting. I mean, I just got it yesterday, but it's really like it's lovely. It's built so well. I like the weight. The it set up and plays amazing. It's very cool. It's like oh man, and I can see why people fall in love with these because they're just really well built. They stand the test of time. That it's really fun to get an instrument like that where I'm so used to Fender stuff or like the more of the classic vintage stuff. It's really fun to get something like this. Just all the proprietary yeah. stuff, like the tuners they made for them. And man, dude, they were killing bases. Yeah, they're and really cool. In many cool. ways, were better than Fender in terms of build quality. Like those sure. made out, were they made in Japan? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, made in Japan. Yamaha BB3000. It's a 3000A, so it's slightly different to mine because it's an active model. Can you make it passive? Is there any sort of like things that you can do to I was, I was pacify pulling on these, beast? but I don't think so. I think it's just are you like active a, Are you forever. slightly disappointed because of that? You're like, mm. <laughs> like uh, Well, and it's funny because I'm like, uh, you know, I don't like PJs. I've had this whole thing of like, don't like it, not into it. But then I feel like the past, I don't know. I've I've bought a few of them <laughs> recently, yeah. and I'm like, do I like them? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm just so fascinated. I love to let a bass be a bass. So I, you know, this one came this way. Um, yeah, if it had a passive option, I'd check it out. But I also want, I love this idea of like molding yourself, going like, oh, what is what is this telling me to play? What art and then, can I bring out of this particular instrument? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, dude. Exactly. Double art, dude. Double um, art, baby. Yeah, what's, but the what's art, your... like, like, what was that? What when when was that made? That bass. The, oh, I'm gonna screw it up, but it was mid '80s. So between, I think this is an '86. Don't quote me on that. You know, like anybody cares. Anybody who's like wrong, <laughs> <laughs> probably nobody really cares. But I think it's mid '80s for sure. I think '86. Yeah. 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 I don't know what the one what I've got, but just to just to, I guess to sort of like bring it back to what I was saying before, like a lot of those Yamaha bases, in fact, probably most of them were actually better than Fenders in terms of build quality. Yes, like I'm not sure about like the '80s Fenders, but to, like I've just got recently, and this is the third one I wanted to mention for me. Yeah, what was that? The fourth. Anyway, the next one I wanted to mention, the bases <laughs> that surprised me, yeah. is that '74 Fender Jazz that I've got that's oh, in my living jazz. room at the minute. It is. A beast. It's a yes. really, really nice jazz. It um, is. It is. The next like, I remember the back. Oh. Yeah, they've taken the finish off. Yeah. And actually and I got a play I got to play a 78 yesterday. Oh yeah. I played a se- yeah, played a 78 yesterday. At it Andy's not as nice. It was Andy's black one. He sent it over, yes. yeah. Yes. For the thing you that we're doing. Did a little January. side by yeah, side little, situation yeah, for exactly. it. Exactly. It is yeah. not as nice as, as the right. seventy four. Um particularly the neck, actually. The neck carve is different on the seventy four than totally the seventy eight. Yeah, is totally the seventy four yeah. is the seventy four a little more how you like it, a little more uh narrow yes. front to back. Yes. yes. And the seventy eight is chunky, like a pole cut in half. Yeah, it's like a pole cut in half. It's sort of like re- it's like a circle halved. You know I mean? Yes, some yes. might call it a semicircle. <laughs> <laughs> they would not be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they would not be wrong. Yeah, so that's definitely more like a semicircle vibe, where this one's got more of a more of a sort of like yeah, it's a bit thinner front to back. Did you already it's know an that oval cut in half? Your seventy four, oh. right? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. It's so, an oval so, cut in half. Some yeah. might call that a semi oval. Semi oval. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like? Did you already know that? Did you um, know? Because like, you, you've been a sort of like you're a seventies jazz geek. You know, you've got you've been down that road before. 
I, you know, I got that, I got that 78 Antigua bass, right? That was the first seventies jazz I ever had any experience with. And it kind of had a chunkier front to back neck. I liked it. Then I discovered, oh, wow. In that era, they all are a little chunky. They vary a little, which is odd, but um, you'd think they would have locked down a CNC situation and, but they all feel a little different. The, but the early 70s stuff it sort of is a mystery to me. I've only, I haven't played very many of them. Like, yeah. Or I don't remember noticing the next stuff. But I, the Go one ahead. that you got, that 74, um, I remember playing that and thinking, oh, wow, this neck is different. Totally different yeah. than yeah, totally I have those two yeah. 78s, right? I've got that blonde one and the Antigua, and they're more semicircle instead of semi oval. <laughs> Semi, semi, semi. Yeah. Sem but, semi, man, yes. I, but I'm ju yes. just going to my earlier point, though, about the fender, fender build quality. Holy shit. The bridge pickup route on that <laughs> on that 74 Jazz <laughs> yes. looks like somebody's used a butter knife yes. and a hammer. Like, I, yes. I just looked at it and I was like, what happened? Right. And then I realized, I was like, oh, nothing happened. It must have, because you can see the finish, like... It must have left a factory like that. It is bonkers. Just like, like made on no, a Friday, you know? Made on I mean, a Friday, dude yeah. smoking a bit of weed, you know, like what, <laughs> yes. something's going on. Yeah, something's going yeah. on. Just <laughs> ready, to, ready to clock out, man. I got to just do a few last bridge pickup routes and just like <laughs> get oh, in there and it is so who cares? Bad. I'll have to, you have, when you come over, have a look. I might, I might send you a photo of it this week. It's crazy. Yes. There's like, I would say like a three to four mil gap around the pickup. around the pickup yeah around the pickup yeah it's, it's crazy <laughs> yeah so and, and there's a whole obviously it was cbs by then wasn't it like it was oh, cbs yeah. it's three bolt neck with the micro tilt it's and you know famously when they went to cbs the bill quality suffered yes is that i mean that's correct it, right especially into the 70s right they go to cbs in 65 cbs is really buttoned up using all the old fender parts i mean mid to late 60s fender stuff is regarded really well even some of the early fender stuff but then i feel like you you start to hear people disparage the cbs era in about mid 70s to the time it changed hands and went back to the employees there was like a section of employees that bought the company back oh, from there? cbs in wow. 82 and wow, that's when you awesome. see all of the you know all of those fullerton they call those fullerton reissues so they Got started it. to do this thing like cbs was just thinking about progression they were thinking that that's why they made the katana base and the performer and those weird Got shapes they're yeah, trying yeah. to be in the 80s and then it yeah. was just falling apart and then there was a group of fender employees that bought the company back and they looked back to the history and that's when they first started to do reissues so maybe it got locked down maybe in the 80s the build quality was like back to where it needed to be i mean i don't know i think it i think it got better and and that's when they started to do some outsourcing to japan and there are a lot of people that consider those like the japanese built fenders some of the best you know um yeah i think it got better for sure there's but some that great said, bases from there's some great bases getting made out of it out of yeah japan. Oh, i tell sure. you zed's out of japan right I tell you yes. zed Yes. And they're, oh, I tell you, Z, I, I love it, you dude. Guys, yeah. Yes, I love it. I'm like, Z. Z. oh, right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like those bases look killer. Dude, and you know what else? Um, let me just grab, you know, so you, you're you talking about uh, all of these bases that you that have surprised you. Let me just grab one more. I'll be right back. I'll go for it. Talk go amongst it. yourselves. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them about a 70s, a bit more about the 70s jazz bass. So just as, as Ian's gone to get that, I will say that the the 1974 jazz bass that I've just got has, even with the cranky build quality, it's not cranky build quality. I'm kind of being unjust there. I think it's more, you know, it does what it it does what it does, but it has got a rather large bridge route for the bridge pickup. But putting all of that to one side, the the tone of that seventy four jazz bass, like build quality aside, the tone of the build the tone of the seventy four jazz bass is awesome. It is and awesome. There are, it's 
awesome. And there are certain things that I really like about 70s jazz basses that I've kind of fallen in love with through that instrument. So, yes. for instance, the bullet truss rod. How oh, yeah. freaking cool is the bullet truss it's rod? The best. You know, yes. it's the best. It's so yes. cool. It's so like, there's something about it that just I love, right? And then also the dark. Uh, the dark finish on the front of the headstock. I really like that as well about, <laughs> you know, to the point where I was like fantasized. I was like, huh, if I ever get another bass made is like a sort of like a bit of a hat tip towards those Fender, those seventies Fender jazzes might get the, might get the headstock covered on the front of it in that, like a little darker finish. Oh, Not I love it. Dark, like a dark tint. A yeah. yeah dark because, tint, because yeah. how long, like you, can you still smoke in pubs in the UK or no? No, no. When did that go away? Was it similar to the States when that went away? Like, I think we... You guys were before. It, were we? We were I in, so, yeah. I think, like the, the mid two, like early 2000s, maybe? Yeah, I don't no, even I think, remember. Well, I was like 28. I was, oh, I was in New York. First time I went to New York was like 2008. And I can remember it was definitely banned then inside pubs but i can remember sort of like as soon as the uh as soon as like the last orders was called it was like curtains shut and everybody just like started smoking yes you know smoking yeah. cigs and stuff so I, I imagine sort of like between sort of like 2005 and 2008 or something yeah, like that sure. that's when it it's that's like so all of these weird. world leaders got together and sort of like you know started considering <laughs> our health or something I what know. was going on <laughs> oh and the people that were like heavy smokers were so pissed and i mean i suppose i would be too it's like take it you're taking away my freedom but i will yeah, tell yeah. you man i will never forget like my old band used to play this bar right and i, I had those i had those pv cabinets that were mm. like fur covered you know they were covered oh, yeah. in remember when base companies were like let's cover them in carpet like God, yeah that, that was such a terrible idea i think terrible <laughs> <laughs> terrible they're ugly and they got like fuzzy and then if and you've then, got a dog all of your dog <laughs> hair used to just got clinged yes. or cat hair and stuff. God, it's like, yeah. what were they thinking? But then I remember too, like all of that carpet would absorb the smell of wherever you were. So we yeah. would have like a two day gig in some horrific bar, right? Like up North in Minnesota. And yeah. I, I, and I wouldn't, I couldn't tell in real time, but I would, you know, load the stuff into my car. I had like a Chevy Lumina two door, open that door, dude, push the seats forward, put the cabs <laughs> in the back, dude. Yeah. And then I would drive home. And then the next day I'd get in my car with the cabinets and it was like, oh, oh, my car is just the bar now. Yeah, it's just the bar. the bar. It, it just is the bar. It smells like an ashtray. <laughs> yes. And it smells like piss. And it smells like barf. And it smells oh, like liquor the good old and days, sweat. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was my vibe, dude. I used to smoke 20, <laughs> 20 rollies a day. On a, on oh, a, my God, dude. On a bad Wait, day, did you like roll more. your own? Did you oh, roll yeah, your dude. own? Yeah. Rollies yeah. means like a, you like cowboy I, style you're rolling your own cigarette yeah i used to roll my own cigarettes Badass no filters divine. or anything. there was no filters back then you know what i mean <laughs> I, could, I used to sort of like just roll my own and just yeah all that man for oh, years baby. Started, yeah well i stopped it took me a while to stop actually it uh um, i'm yeah, sure I, I had several failed attempts and sometimes i, I, I would like stop for like a, a year and then yeah. something happens and you just start smoking again yeah it was like probably five years or something like that when was the last time when was the last time you had a roly oh the last time i had a roly or oh, just man. a cigarette i can a I'll, cigarette? I'll open it up yeah well yeah because I, I actually moved to cigarettes at one point for i can't remember why um the last time i had a cigarette oh dude i can't a long time ago <laughs> A long, long time, time ago. ago. So, yeah. so you're not you're not the kind of guy where like maybe you're out with the boys, you're out drinking, and then and then, and then somebody no, I can't is like, do that. dude, right? no, right? No. So, so, so you had to cut it off. It was I over. Had, I learned that lesson like four or five times. Because like, I'll just have one, and then I'm you're not, back. Doing yeah, it. I'm not a social smoker. It's the worst. <laughs> yeah, I think like probably I think I actually had it outside my house where my brother actually. Because my brother used to sort of like smoke, kind of like kind of irregularly. And uh, but he could do that social smoking thing where yes. for me it's like I have one, I'm like, I'm back, I'm back in town. 
<laughs> yeah, ah, yeah. Try to stop Woo. it. Dude, Woo. did, did you, I mean, I don't know if I've told you this before, but I have never smoked a cigarette in my life. Sleep easy, dude. I smoked them all lame? for you. <laughs> I smoked them all for you. You didn't dude. even know. <laughs> no, but it's so much cooler to be like, oh, yeah, man, I, ha- I did it. And then I tried to stop it and it had a hard road. And then, like, then I got through it and I'm like, I've never smoked one, guys. Oh, no, well, Lisa's <laughs> guys, never smoked. Guys, what's it like? Is Lisa's it fun? never smoked a cigarette. Really? She never smoked. Yeah, she's never smoked a cigarette. She's never, yeah, she's like super clean, super clean. Wow. But, um, yeah. Yeah, you're not missing much, man. I, like I would say that sometimes, you know, when I'm watching a watching a TV show from back yeah. in the day, because obviously people don't smoke on TV shows now, right? For the most part, but right. like I'm watching a TV show, it's like filmed in the '80s or the '90s oh, or something yeah. like that, and you know, the <laughs> actors just sort of like <laughs> just draw. It's like oh. it, it's it's a dark scene. You you're know, pining you away. See, you can see yeah. it. It's when, for me, I used to draw it in, and then I used to like to blow it out my nose. Like, oh, oh so yeah. good. So good. <laughs> oh, my God, oh, dude. Amazing. I, Spoken like I, an addict. Yeah, <laughs> I had, yeah, absolutely. I had my last cigarette within the last five years, I have to say that. Yeah. Wow, yeah. 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 I think I gave up maybe, like, properly gave up around – nine like nine eight or nine years ago but then had sort of like a few years of like you know and then probably sort of like five yeah. years ago I reckon, yeah five years because ago. when you said you're not missing much it wasn't that convincing <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're not you're not missing much but maybe <laughs> I've told you this, but I have this joke with Emily of like any, like I, I don't drink. I haven't ever drank. I mean, I've had sips of things, but I've never had like a glass of, or like my own beer or my own scotch or right. Like I've had, I've tasted things. Um, I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never done any, any other kind of drugs, smoked weed or even had like a weed gummy, anything like that. But I have this joke with Emily, my wife, where I always will just tell her I'm starting tonight. Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. 44 Z- years old, we're out doing something. And I'm like, hey, tonight's the night. She's like, oh, yeah, tonight's the night. I'm like, yes, <laughs> I'm starting tonight. And she's like, woohoo, <laughs> let's go. And then, you know, it <laughs> never happens. But, <laughs> but I like to say it. Oh, yeah, I'm starting tonight. Can you imagine, dude, just 44? Like, okay, well. Let, let's try some things. Can you imagine just like the roller coaster of doom that I would, I am such an addictive personality. I mean, I'm addicted to coffee. I'm addicted to food. I'm addicted to bases. Right. And like, if I started doing drugs, it would, would, would be would you do a disaster. Ayahuasca? Would you do ayahuasca? No. no. I mean, dude, like people, people have asked me and I have friends that are like, oh man, you should consider micro dosing or like, oh man, you know, like weed gummies or, and I just, here's the thing. Some of it could be really helpful. Some of it could actually be amazing. I have a friend who talks about seeing a thread that goes from all of his experiences and his decisions all the way back to his childhood. And he sees clear as day why he makes the decisions he makes because of microdosing, because of LSD. And he's like, it is better than any therapy I've ever had. It's better than right. And, and I'm like, cool, man. I just feel like (laughs) if I started anything, I would become the guy that always talked about LSD or always talked about weed or always talked about bourbon or like, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you you go like super deep into bourbon and you'd be like, oh, oh, it needs to be in this sort of like, yeah, can't, it can't be in a sort of like a normal cask. It needs to be in this particular wood cask. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just would probably want to get hammered and and then disguise it with talking about the nerdiness and like, oh no, I'm I'm just an enthusiast. Of, I'm, I'm a bourbon <laughs> I'm really enthusiast, but really I'm just like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> like it doesn't matter at all, dude. I'm just like, <laughs> like down well, the hatch. Ayahuasca is different though, right? And just oh, to put it God. out there, I like because because even if you have got an addictive personality, you cannot, you know. I think that 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 crosses the line into sort of like. Well, and just put it out that I have not tried ayahuasca. Um, it does interest me to, yeah. but you've got to travel to South America. At least I think you do. 
You, you need to go to I, South America. So you can't be nerdy about ayahuasca unless you say, oh, you can't. Unless, kind of, unless you travel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know some people that have done it in the States, though. I think you can. What, have tra- <laughs> what they've d- done ayahuasca in the States. Yeah. Maybe you can get it in the States. I, you can get almost yeah. anything in the States, uh. I think. <laughs> it's just <laughs> brutal. <laughs> yeah, oh. I, I would do. I think I'd do it. I think I'd do it. It just it scares me because of the. I think it's such a long experience. Yes, it's like a lot. There's no button to press. You know, there's right. like actually, <clears throat> I don't like this feeling. I'm just going to press this button and then it'll be over and, and eject like, from the experience. Yeah, you can't. There's do no that. way to eject. Yeah. Right, and it's and from the people that I've. Yeah, I don't actually think I know anybody that's done it. Maybe anyway, but the 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 people that I've heard talking about it, it seems like quite an intense experience. Yes. If anybody doesn't know or have has heard of ayahuasca before, it's actually really popular. Um, for I guess sort of like it sounds to 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 make you think in different ways. It's not. I think that um, the word drug is used kind of. It, it's. Especially from like somebody that's like you know for like forty four or older, when somebody says drug, you have like a very specific thing yeah. that you're like, oh yeah, because this bad thing here. So, and you know, and it's like some people you know call ayahuasca plant medicine, and there's a right. whole different you know or that whole thing. So, without sort of like going taking this episode completely off the rails, but it definitely <laughs> does interests me but I'm yeah just sure, like, i can tell man. you're calling it plant yeah. medicine dude <laughs> plant medicine dude yeah i'm going to south america lisa would be like you finally lost the divine you're traveling to south oh, america yeah to meet a you know yeah to do the whole thing with. yeah man i i know just check this out i have uh i have a friend who told me about he would go into the woods with his buddies and like and do mushrooms right drink mushroom tea or like and and he had this experience repeatedly where he would be in the woods with his friends and have this lovely experience on mushrooms where he felt connected to everything connected to the trees to the grass to the water and and he said that whenever he used something like sat in a chair the chair was came to life and would like hug him and what? and said that uh the chair would then thank him for using it for its intended purpose each blade of grass that he stepped on would thank him. Oh, thank you so much. We feel, you know, you used us for our intended purpose and everything was about him. Right. And then he said when he would, the next day he's sober, he lost that connection and it was super depressing. And he just always wanted to be on mushrooms always. And that's why he had to quit because it was so right. And I think that's, that's the danger, right? That, and certain other drugs that are so much more addictive, that's the danger is like the high becomes this reality that you want to experience, right? Yeah. It becomes yeah. like the metaverse or like, right? Like this altered reality that the you want to. Verse. Yes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That you want to live in. And, you know, he was like, I had to stop because losing that connection um, felt just devastating. Like in the morning, I was like, oh, why isn't the tent thanking me for sleeping in it? <laughs> like, well, it's just a tent now. <laughs> he was basically a rock star to all of his, sort of, yes, like, all of these sort of like random yeah. objects. They yes. just loved him. Yeah, he they loved him. His, yeah, his ego hated it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hated the, just the departure from that space. Yep, amazing. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, listen up, man. If I do yeah. have like an ayahuasca experience, I will for sure share it on this podcast <laughs> for everybody to you be. Have to uh, tell us. Oh, hell yeah! You have to hell tell yeah. us. Yeah, you so do. So, what's this space you've got here? Oh, uh, this is just just the last one uh, that I was grabbing before we went down our rabbit hole of drugs. Uh, this this was a base <laughs> that I got that floored me. I think I paid nine hundred dollars for this instrument. I'd it's always been Ibanez. interested. Yep, it's an Ibanez yeah. uh, musician from the 80s. I think the early 80s, this one, maybe 83, 4, I don't know. But it's incredible. It has essentially a P-based neck pickup here, jazz bass pickup here. The pull pieces will, like, static when I touch them, so I put a piece of gaff tape over this back pickup. Oh, really? That is a great hack, by the way, everybody. If you've got pull pieces that when you play and your finger touches them, they go, they make little spiky, sort of static yeah. noises through your amp piece of gaff tape 
I think it looks kind of cool too. What? Solves the problem. This bass, I pulled it out, played it. It was amazing, immaculate from note one. I let me just see if I've got something. Here. Oh, that was super woody. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really There's cool. A bunch of them for sale. A bunch of them for sale. On <laughs> Are there? Wow. Yeah. yeah. There uh, and I think I mean I, I'm gonna guess they're what are they in the teens? About fifteen hundred. Yeah, they're going up. I mean, guys, I bought this for nine hundred bucks just a couple years, probably two years ago, and they're yeah they're probably fifteen hundred now. I mean, man, that's wild, right? In yeah. a in a couple of years, they what they twenty five percented up m- more yeah. maybe thirty percent. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, there's crazy. A bunch of, there's about ten of them on here. Yeah. They're yeah. incredible. Everybody. Not, not for much longer. Everybody will be going to buy them. <laughs> Go get one. Go get one. They're what, amazing. What, really. What about really your nightmare me. bases here? Yeah. Okay. Give well. Nightmare bases. Dude, nightmare. Dude. I mean, I have beside me here Are you gonna the get it? biggest nightmare. And I don't have to walk. I, I prepared for the podcast in this regard. Oh, wow. I yeah. have it right here. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to show you the biggest nightmare, the biggest disappointment, the biggest struggle, the biggest stretch. I don't know why I still have it. I feel bad for the manufacturer now, but you said it. <laughs> this was oh boy. actually like a huge piece of shit when I got it. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> No! <laughs> yes. Really? This is, if, if, you're not, if you're not watching the pod, which we would encourage you to do, right, Scott? We would encourage Absolutely. you to watch the pod. Oh, find it this, on the YouTubes. Yeah, find it on the YouTubes. This is my 1978 Antigua jazz bass. What I would consider and what other people, too, tell me, this is my bass. Like, this is the bass that I play for tons of stuff. It became my number one. Um is it when your number I, one now? Because I always think about the other one being your number one. Sorry, just what the know, wh- which one? The uh, your other jazz. Well, I've your got other a jazz, <laughs> like the, the, one the blonde that, one like the that I brought. One. Oh, the no, sunburst, the sunburst one. one. Sunburst one. Yeah. Sunburst one is incredible. That always has flats. So, can I have two number ones? Can I have one number one with rounds and one with flats? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah, it's that beat up sunburst one with flats. I just love yeah. it. It's honest. It's amazing. But that bass is sort of a piece of shit, too, honestly. Wow. This one, when I got it, Scott, I mean, I was so excited because I'd never had – this is the first vintage bass I ever bought. I've, I've probably told the story before, but check this out. I bought this on eBay from a guy um, who actually grew up in a town in Montana that my great-grandmother lived in and had a school. And he went to her school. So we had this immediate rapport. I saw it on eBay and I asked if I could call the guy. This was back in 03, 2003, yeah. dude, oh, 20 years ago. That's insane. And he said, yeah. And we got to chatting and he was like, oh, you, you're meant for this base. And then he's like, here's the deal. We agreed on a price, which I think was $1,100, Scott. Ooh. Isn't that wild? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he was like, okay, um, you just have to be the high bidder. Then I'll close the auction. And I said, oh, okay. And I bid and bid and bid and it bid it up over 11 and i was on the phone with him and he was like it's okay he was seeing it in real time right he's like it's fine just keep you know it's okay it's all good it'll probably you'll probably be the high bidder soon and i think it got up to like 17 (gasps) and then i was finally the high bidder and i was like oh and to me that was like too much you know and he, he was like you know what i was like oh i was like you know his name's martin which is so cool because that's my middle name and i was like oh martin you know like if you want to sell it to that guy, that's that's fine. I, I I don't think I can pay seventeen. He's like, you're the person that's supposed to have this base. It's all good. Um, let let's do it. And I was like, okay. And then he's like, oh, by the way, I don't take PayPal. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he's oh. like, can you just send me a check? And so I am not advising this to anybody, <laughs> but against my, you know, I didn't I didn't ask anybody because I knew that I'll say it was a terrible idea. But I wanted this base so bad. I wrote this dude a personal check. Oh, put it in the mail. Yeah. And then he sent me this. And here's the thing. I got this base and the things that you're describing about your 74, like terrible routes, um, 
it came and I, I, I was immediately in love with how it looked, but it didn't yeah. play great. Um, the pickups were super microphonic, like you'd plug it into anything and it would feed back. I, I've oh. forgotten about this, but someone reminded me, I sent these pickups in to Lindy Fralin, not to have them rewound, oh, wow. but to have them repotted. Have you ever heard of oh. that? Yeah. Like, so yeah. they put wax inside the pickup to like seal the components so they're not vibrating. Yeah. And then they sent them back. And I had, I mean, it played terribly. There was all this fret buzz all over it. So I had, I actually had like multiple setups done. I think I was in love with the aesthetic of it so much that I was yeah. like, I am willing this bass to play and sound great. I have to make it work. I have to make what was <laughs> yeah. it? Was it did it have that banana jump at the end of the fingerboard? Is that what was going on with the setup? Yeah, for sure it had yeah. <laughs> Dude, I love the banana jump. Yeah, we, the banana we call it a jump, ski yeah. slope. You oh, know, yeah, like right where it's slope, like yeah. where it kind of pops up near the near the bolt where the neck connects to the body and that yeah. buzzes up there. And then one of my favorite terrible things about this bass, look at the the tuner, the D string tuner sticks off the oh, edge wow. of the headstock and if you see headstock, this, if you great. see it from this angle you can see the tuner amazing can you see that it? is phenomenal isn't it they were just like yeah it'll be just fine terrible oh and i mean you know and i just remember like compared to all the other things i had i had modulus bases and lakelands and it, it sounded worse but then it was interesting because there were a few people that were like no it's cool though it has like a character yeah. You know, I had like, I brought it on a session and I was like, I don't know, I've got this vintage bass. So I plug it in and I plugged it in and then, then they tweaked a bunch of preamps and they're like, oh no, the, you can hear the mid range and the wood and like, it's cool. And I was like, oh. And so I kind of had to reevaluate what I thought good was, you know? In terms and of I, sound and tone. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And I just, the amount of work, money, <laughs> blood, sweat, tears, effort, playing time that I put into this instrument turned it from a nightmare into a, into a beautiful dream. <laughs> I <laughs> love did you this get, bass. So, so, so you got the neck sorted down the end, the, the, the yeah. setup's good, all of that. Yeah. yeah. The setup is amazing on it. Actually. Like I took it to a couple of techs because somebody did the nut really well and then dressed it, but it was still buzzy up here. And then I took it to another tech and they ended up sorting the frets up here. I mean, the frets are really low, but it, but it's, it's amazing. And so it's yeah. it's like, dude, it's full of quirks. Like, you know, in Star Wars, Han Solo has to bang the Millennium Falcon, you know, fire it up, and it's like, <laughs> fires down. That is exactly Whack, what smack. the 70s, yeah. It's the same <laughs> as know? that 74 that I've got. It just, it's yeah. like the Millennium Falcon. You need to, like, give it a kick. Like, there's so many, <laughs> yeah. like, anything above the yeah. sort of, like, 14th fret, just, like, Buzzes to shit. Oh. So you just, you know, so I'm going to have to try and figure that out. But it yeah. sounds so damn good down the yeah. other end. Yeah. And from a resonant point of view, it's perfect. Oh, yeah. It just yep. feels great. You can just feel it. And, and yeah, and it's just, and to your point, it's just sort of like, it looks awesome. Like there's a yeah. cigarette burn in, <laughs> you know, in the headstock work. The headstock, Somebody yeah. who's been playing it used to keep his cigarettes stuck in the top of it and it's just so burnt great. the headstock. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Like Clapton style, <laughs> yeah. dude. Oh. Yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. Oh. And yeah, and there's something really cool about deciding to put the love and the care and the work into an instrument that isn't perfect, that doesn't absolutely fit you. I mean, I think about this in terms of relationship too, right? Like the people that are out there that are looking for the friend or the spouse or whatever, the perfect relationship that just fits them, well, it doesn't exist because you have to do the work, right? Yeah, you have to do yeah, the work. Yeah, there sure. is no perfect marriage, like where you find somebody and, oh, they're the perfect, and you don't have to change anything about yourself. That is naive. And it is the same with instruments. It's the same. I'm telling you that, yeah, you know, you think yeah. the Holy Grail is out there, but it is not. It's about what you put in to the instrument. At least that's what it, what it is for me. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Yeah. And even if you get one of the, because if you get one of these like super clean, brand new instrument, custom made, yeah. well, that's missing all of the stuff that we've been talking about, that kind of like that Millennium Falcon vibe where you've I got know. like the something, that soul that has, that has happened and kind of like 
uh, been absorbed into it over the yes. sort of like 20 or 30 or 40 years it's been played for or sometimes yeah. it, you know, many many times longer so yeah. yeah like i love it I, I love that kind of philosophy in terms of you know there's always something you gotta you've got to change what you do in terms of the instrument i want to know about your nightmare base i've got i've got two yeah i've got two i'm not going to everybody's like salivating like, oh, mention the manufacturer I'm just i'm gonna heads up say i'm not gonna mention the manufacturer oh my because god both, juicy yeah, because dude i juicy. know because both of these bases both yeah. of these bases um the the manufacturers are still making bases, so mm. I don't. And I know that Fender is still, you know, obviously you've shown your Fender and stuff, but I'm sure that Fender can, you know, take a kick in and, and that'd be fine. They're fine, yeah, yeah. But but these guys, it will affect them. And, and at no point are uh, well. Let me get into it, and you'll understand why I haven't, you know, revealed the names. But you'll also learn something about, you know, my philosophy behind bases at yes. the same time. So first of all, it was, and um, both of these bases were like super custom made like boutique yes. bases super expensive yada 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 the first one was i i you know put my order in and they were like what do you want and i was like oh, oh, yeah. i just gave them this list of stuff and and it came back and it, well i picked up the base and at no point had i take had i taken into consideration the weight of the wood oh sure and it was 12 or 13 pounds this base and it freaking killed me dude it oh, was yes it was so painful emotionally because i'd saved oh, everything yeah, to course. like pay for this base and then there's like a six month or whatever waiting list and you yes, got the waiting yes. list and then and then oh. you finally get it and i did my first gig and the entire left hand side of my shoulder and arm went completely numb Oh, wow. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, and then I was like, so maybe, yeah. And it actually turned oh. out, it took me a whole three gigs to realize that I Couldn't can't use it. this gig and stand. No, I mean, Did I you can't try? Do it, use that bass and stand. Yeah. Did you try yeah, different right. straps? You, you know, you, do. you're trying to, yeah. <laughs> I had all of the yeah. wide straps. I yes, did all of that yes. thing. I even went online and I was like, Maybe I can get a stand to put it in. Oh my you know, god! Yes. You know, like yeah, yeah the Gracie can... stand. I remember those. Yeah, yeah. Like fearless yep. flyers. Did I Joe Dart use mm -hmm. the fearless flyers and Corey in that? So I yep. was going to put it in the stand. I was like, I can't use the stand, <laughs> so I had to sell it. Yeah. So I was super disappointed. I was wow. really, really disappointed in it, and also, hmm, hmm. I also like another one that's popped to mind. Another big mistake that I that I um, that I made was I was advised to go with a thirty six inch scale at one point oh. as well. Thirty was... six inch scale. Yeah, because that's gonna you know everything is gonna sound more like a piano and it's yeah. gonna be yeah yeah. It's and, gonna, and the then B it's strings just... gonna be amazing. Yes. And, and actually, what it came down to, the luthier was really into it. <laughs> that was right. it exactly he wasn't he was yeah. really into it he was like this is right. the best thing i was like yeah it's the best thing right okay right yeah it, it was not great for me it was just so big and like i know yes. anthony jackson plays the 36 but it was just such a stretch and it was a five yeah. string and and that wasn't great either anthony um, also sits down too by the way i mean you know down. like yeah, yeah you know i mean and it, but if you want to stand up and rock, I mean, and the interesting thing too is you have really, really big hands. So like, bear in mind, everybody out there, that like bigger does not make it better. <laughs> like, I'm biting of... my lips so much now. I'm just like, ah, ah, do not tell any jokes, divine. Do not go there. Ah, ah, resist, it's in the resist. way that you use it. <laughs> yeah, but it's... It's for sure. And also on 36 inch instruments, the G string just sounds freaking weird and pinioned. Yes. Right. Yeah. All of that. Right. And then finally, another, this is another instrument uh, that I got. And again, custom builder, the whole thing. Right. And, and, and I had this whole thing specked out. It was a five string bass. It like, 
It came, opened the case. <gasps> it's supposed to be Excalibur, dude. It's, it was it's, like it's Excalibur. Shining on, it was shining yes. on me. Yes, so dude. Plugged it in. Oh, yeah. The B string yeah. was a piece of shit. <laughs> oh, no. It like went bung, 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 bung. <laughs> oh. G D A E. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> no. I was like, oh, yeah. No. So, yeah, it was just bad, yeah. So, oh. and just to put it out there, like, I have played a lot of basses. I've made basses, you know, I, that's what I did when yeah. I was like 16 as an apprenticeship. And, um, and it is the B string on a bass is actually, it's, it can be tricky to get them right. They sound yep. sometimes different to the rest of the strings. Yep. Sometimes they're just inaudible and crap. And a lot of the time, my belief is it's not actually down to the luthier at all. Because mm-hmm. this bass was made by this one of the great bass luthiers. It was like a gazillion dollars. You know, yes. it was made out of the best woods that yes. were, you know, brought yes. from an, yeah, wherever. Do you know what I mean? So Brambleberry, like, elderflower yeah. wood. <laughs> it was an elderflower. It was yes. some curly flamed elderflower wood cut from the, you know, I don't know. At the whatever. bottom of the right. sea for years, preserved yeah, perfectly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 300 years old. Yes. And uh, and it was just, yeah, the B string was just crazy. Crap. And I think that sometimes you get um, the the resonance of the bass just kind of freaks out a little bit. And it's just to do with that particular mix of wood, not even that particular mix of wood, that particular mix of wood, top, back, middle, core, and all oh of that. Boy, right. And those specific trees, because you can make, you know, two bases out of the same material and get different results, right? You're so, so right. what this led me to believe is that. I, from a philosophy standpoint, in terms of bases, yeah. prefer or feel much more secure buying um, custom-made bases from manufacturers who do the same thing repeatedly over and over again and perfect yes. that thing. Now, it makes this, sense. Yeah, and this isn't all luthiers. Some luthiers have a completely different approach. They're sort of like, oh, we will give you any wood you want and, yeah. and any combination That's and right. any combination of pickups and, hey, any bridge and any – they'll do it. And there's, there is a place for that, and that is great, okay? But me personally, from a, philosophical, from a philosophy standpoint and from a comfort standpoint, if I was ordering a base from a boutique maker, I'd want somebody yeah. who did the same thing over and over and over again so the alder two people that, maple rosewood ash yeah, the two, maple yeah, the two people right? that jump to mind are f bass primarily yeah. because i play f bass all the time and i'm by the way i'm not paid to say this or anything like that i'm not affiliated with f bass they just make a great instruments but they yeah. make like their bases are like ash <laughs> yes like, hey what do yes. you what are your base made out of ash or ash. They actually do <laughs> older bodies as well, but I would say that like 90% of their bases are ash. 90% wow. of their base, in fact, all of their bases have hard rock maple necks and yeah. they have either ebony or uh, maple uh, fingerboards. That's it. Nothing That's can it. go wrong. They use the same pickups. They use the same circuit. They use the yes. same bridge. Same. So it's the same thing repeated so they can get better in incremental you know, kind of like tweaks mm, over yes. time, right? Yes. Same as Ken Smith is the same thing, right? Right. So very different from F bass, very different sound, but Ken Smith as a brand have done the same thing. Same woods. It's either a right. white ti- white tiger or a black tiger. It's right. got Ken Smith pickups. It's got Ken Smith bridge. It's it's the same yes, thing exactly. repeated over and over. So I yeah. that's what I really it's what I really dig. And and it's funny, and I think it, this makes so much sense because you've said this to me before and I actually think about it. I think about it from time to time and I go, I wonder if Scott's right about that. But now it makes more sense because you got burned, dude. Got it's burned, like you, yeah. you have base trauma. You have boutique base trauma in your life, you know, where like, you're like, yeah. oh man. And to me, it's almost, for me, it's been the opposite. When I have thought, oh, here we go. This is going to be the tried and true thing like that, that Antigua jazz base. That, those are all the classic things. You would and disappointed crap yeah, and then i was like yeah. oh it must be out there so then you know it sets me on this thing of like you know like that Vorin saku that saku viore oh, made yeah, for me that's yeah. made out of pine and walnut fingerboard and a, a maple neck but like pickups are custom in, in different locations and to me all those things are interesting 
Now, like when I get bases that are all made out of different things and different pickups and all that, I mean, Sarek is something else. I mean, they make more standard stuff, but I have a Sarek that is rifts on two pieces of rifts on maple, Palfero fingerboard, mahogany body, right? Different pickup placement than I'm used to. I am actually intrigued by those differences. Like, Ooh, is this going to offer something that is going to inspire me to play a certain way or think about yeah, the bass in yeah, a certain yeah, way. Like yeah, I get excited yeah. about that. Like, Ooh, what's this recipe going to bring? But I have not been burned by saving up all of my pennies and dropping it. Like, especially younger, right? Yeah. Like dropping it on oh, a thing. You yeah, have yeah. heavy I, expectations. I, and I've made them as well. Yeah, I, I, like just to put it out, right, like I've made have. them as well. And I've been in a situation where I'm like, Oh, I wonder what this is going to sound like. Oh yeah. Cause and is never, it sort of like crap? <laughs> Yeah, well, no, you, you just don't know. You just don't like, know. All right, of right, these right, right, different right. wood combinations yeah. make a massive difference. I'll give you an example, and then I'm going to have to bounce because I've got this meeting to go to. Yeah, but, okay. but check this out. Right? I'll give you an example. Yeah. Great bass player who I was speaking to recently yes. called Mitch Starkman. Beast. Yeah. Do you know Mitch? No, I don't know Mitch. Mitch Starkman. You don't know Mitch Starkman? No. You've got to check him out. Okay. You'll see his face, and you'll be like, oh, Mitch. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's, can you remember the Aleva Capolo, Aleva Capolo, Aleva Capolo? Yep. Can you remember the old videos they did in the old shop showing the different models? There were five strings. Man, and I, don't know. I don't know if player. I saw those. And that's oh, it Mitch. Mitch. It's Mitch that did the, yeah. Oh. So it's Mitch that did them, and he plays three, three types of basses. And just check this out. He's such a bass nerd yeah but like awesome as well like yeah. i think that his ears are like f from the way he speaks about it i'm like oh he's like he's like the doctor he's like the tone doctor i'm like oh he knows stuff that i am not old enough or experienced <laughs> enough yet to hear yes like and he, yes. he plays f basses he plays alintos and he plays um and he plays oliva capolos okay right so i'm talking to him about jazz basses he's like well what kind of vibe are you going for i'm like well, maybe your 60s or 70s and stuff like that. And he's like, well, you know, the 60s are much harder to create, recreate because of all of these things. Whoa. And then, yeah. And there's like the 70s easier to create. But then this is when he gets really nerdy and there's a point to this. He's like, you see, he's he's talking about fingerboard thickness. Yes, sure. The th and he's talking specifically about how fingerboard thickness, so same material, Yep. Okay. Same material, but the fingerboard thickness, th the fingerboard thickness on a on a neck changes the tone between yeah. these two types of like fender design, right? Sure. And my mind was, but he was like, this kind of thing has got it's got more of a mid range bump and stuff. I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't, oh, I don't. yeah. So yeah. all that to say that. So what Mitch is talking about there is a base with the same body wood, mm. the same neck wood, yep. but like two or three mil more of fingerboard on one and how that changes the tone. And wow. I was like, oh, yeah. And that all goes back to sort of like when you're getting all of these different woods and stuff like that and mixing and matching. Yes. Sometimes, that sometimes, and I'm not, you know, I'm not taking away from the makers that do that or saying that those bases don't sound incredible because a lot of them do. Sure. But what I would say is it's, 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 I think it's harder to be consistent with just like throwing out lots of different woods together and sort of like experiment. Just like see what we get. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, especially if you take even just sort of like a, a, like a classic and change two mil oh, of the, on the of, fingerboard of the thickness of the and it changes the, the oh, tone. Oh yeah, right. Pretty cool, right? Wow, yeah. man, but I love that. Ch check Mitch Starkman out okay. on Instagram. He's a beast of a player. I don't think he, he posts on there much. He should absolutely post more. Yeah, but come he's, on, Mitch. Uh, he, he's a killer player. Killer oh, player. Cool. I'll check him anyway, out. Anyway, dudes, Ian, I'm gonna have to bounce. Got a got a hot meeting. I got to be in. And also, <laughs> um, just to let everybody know that we've got a special deal on right now, so you can actually get a membership um, over at SBL for fifty dollars off. Hey. So if you want to go check that out, just go to Let's Go Base. Let's go base. Com. Let's go back. Go, go to let's go base.com uh, and grab that $50 off um, the membership. It gets you access to everything and players path. There's a whole page that tells you all about players path and what it is and what yes. you do for your playing. It's super cool. It's, it's super so cool. cool. All the live streams you do on Mondays as well. I mean, platform yeah. side, like if you take that trial, you're going to have a lot of, you're going to have a lot of fun.
Absolutely. You're gonna learn something too. So come on, and we'll hang see out with you. us. We'll, we'll be lurking around. Yeah, we we'll will. Be lurking around the inside <laughs> like two great white sharks. Actually, we won't be, but like two manatees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just exactly. Sort of like, oh. Just slow manatee. I'm, I'm the slowest of the two. Also. <laughs> yeah. oh. Hey man, have you checked out the fingerboard? Oh. <laughs> uh, I have, but I could use a little more work on it. Oh. <laughs> we need to get out, Mama. We need to get out. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Okay, dude. All right. We'll see you. Take it easy. Bye. Cheers, everybody. Bye bye.